In this chapter, specifically within the cave, Essie June was taken aback. It is noteworthy that the world's most formidable hunter is aware of this situation and finds it hard to believe that Theo has become friends with someone of his caliber without any issues. He also discovered that June is not from the fourth floor, which posed a significant problem. However, Theo was confident in informing the president that there was no need for concern whatsoever. As per the contract they had signed, the narrative that Theo shared with them was a secret known only to the three of them, and it could not be disclosed unless one signed a contract similar to Theo's with me. Additionally, support the channel by clicking the subscribe button and leaving a like, as it greatly aids the channel. S.E. June realized that Don Shik is the student of the old man and began to ponder whether his family was now under the protection of the world's strongest hunter. If that were the case, he had no reason to worry, and it would be beneficial for the farm. Tower if the old man and Don Shik were indebted to him, as he could then request assistance with crop care. Suddenly, in June, a lightning bolt struck within his mind. While he realized this, even if the sale of the sun was merely coincidental, the old man's sweet potatoes were indeed a worthwhile gamble. Unbeknownst to him, Theo had accomplished something truly significant. Suddenly, he turned to the tower farmer and inquired, wondering why Assy June had requested a favor from him. He asked Theo if he recalled the reason behind it. Theo had become a wandering merchant. And the first thing that came to the tower farmer's mind was that Theo had lost his girlfriend due to the black cat, Oring. Upon hearing this response, Theo felt a surge of anger and boldly informed S.E. June that he had seen Oren in the merchant's area. He added that he had now become a wanderer himself, as if that were not enough. Oren had been deceived by the goblin, Scarum, who had blamed Theo for reporting him to the merchant association, tarnishing his reputation. Everything was unfolding once more just as it had before. Theo was carrying useless items from outside the tower due to Scarum and contemplated going to the 99th floor to present them to the Bull King. Now, Oring was engaging in the same behavior, ultimately falling victim to a scam. Theo genuinely desired to confront the group of wandering merchants and pote. A stop to their actions, Theo was crafting a doll for a child, gently patting the shirt of the bull. While S.E. June began to contemplate his next course of action, suddenly, a mischievous grin spread across his face as he devised a plan that seemed to promise a great deal of fun in his mind. Meanwhile, in a scene of transformation, we observed that Oren and his followers had now found themselves in the desert, region of floor 99. The black cat pondered what had transpired on the 99th floor, as there was nothing to be found, and even breathing had become a challenge due to the harsh conditions. Yet, Oren remained oblivious, as he had been before and began to request food from his followers, feeling increasingly hungry. However, they immediately informed him that there was no possibility of any food being available on the 99th floor. The servant from the first floor then explained to Oren that he was the one who had paid for the merchants, registration fees and the burdensome purchases. After acquiring all the goblin items, he had spent the remaining funds solely on drinks to feel slightly better than Theo. This was due to Oren's lack of any essential travel supplies upon reaching the 99th floor, which had now left even the black cat on the verge of starvation, facing death, despite the minion's harsh truth being exaggerated in front of the black cat. However, as a novice, Oren had always believed that the creature was questioning whether it was capable enough to sell all the items and earn 1,000 coins. Oren decided to adhere to the plan and inform the other followers that they should approach the Bull King to request some water and food. He had just arrived at this dilapidated place to sell rare items and generate income, yet he was confident that his collection would be handled properly. Once the items were presented to the king, he inquired of the creature holding the mat how long it would take for them to reach their destination. However, the minion with the map revealed something that Oren had never accepted before. According to the map, he would need to work directly for two or three days to reach the location of the Bull King. Oren's eyes widened in surprise, and his tail stood upright, much like the items hanging between their pockets, while the other client was certain that they would meet their demise. Nevertheless, suddenly, both cats heard a sound resulting from movement. When they turned around, they saw that some rabbits were selling cold water in this harsh situation. Oren and his group began to run towards the plump rabbits and eventually stopped. 
Having reached their location, hope shone in their eyes as they wished to survive another day, and the plump rabbit was willing to offer them some water. The rabbit presented a single bottle of water to Orin, informing him that it would cost 0.5 tower coins per bottle. The cat could hardly believe that water could be so expensive, but the rabbit immediately urged him to look around, suggesting that the situation was not as dire as it seemed. The man spoke about the reasons for the high price, but Orin was at a loss for what to do. As he had no tower coins he was willing to part with and desired to return home. The plump rabbit then inquired if he was a guest of the wandering bull king. Initially, Orin, the merchant, struggled to comprehend the rabbit's meaning. However, he realized that this was his opportunity and immediately informed him about a rabbit that was on its way to be sold. The rare items were intended for the bull king, he mentioned, and that if this was indeed the situation, then the compensation for the cat collection was ready. Knowing this, they would receive water to drink, just as Orin had done. Without a moment's hesitation, he agreed. But instead of providing the water, he poured it over the plump rabbit. He promptly handed them three pieces of paper pie and explained that this document served as a guarantee for the credit value of the water bottles, adorned with a charming image. The plump rabbit smiled slightly at Orin and stated that if the loan amount for the water bottles was not repaid within three days, they would be required to repay ten times the amount. Orin was taken aback and blamed the rabbit for being a true fraud after hearing this, as the contract was indeed absurd. Nevertheless, the plump rabbit insisted that they could leave the water as it was. But the contract was binding. If they wished to make a living, the price had to be high, as people often fled after purchasing items on credit. The plump rabbit informed Orin of an alternative method to settle the payment. This suggestion arose spontaneously among themselves. The entities that overheard this mundane conversation observed as the cat immediately began to sign a contract, notifying the plump rabbit of the arrangement. The original amount would be paid within three days, following the sale of items to the bull. Subsequently, King Orin and his followers commenced taking water bottles one by one from the cart. Filling their bags with the contents, they collected all the water that was available in the inventory. They had initiated and consumed it while fleeing, informing the rabbits that they would receive the money in three days. However, both rabbits shared a mischievous yet endearing laugh as one of them munched on a carrot, sarcastically remarking to Orin that they hoped the cat would indeed become wealthy. As the scene shifted to the following day, it became evident that all the water bottles were now empty, and the group of cats continued their journey. Orin found himself in a situation where he had consumed more water, feeling increasingly thirsty, until they had drained every last drop in a single cup. Now that his bottle was empty, he began requesting his followers to provide him with their share of water bottles. Initially, the minions were reluctant to inform Orin about this. It was not the black cat's portion. Rather, it was the last one, yet it was as domineering as the black cat itself, which was immediately snatched away. While he reprimanded them, the follower was expected to behave appropriately. Even though the minions disapproved and felt powerless to intervene, suddenly, one of them shouted at Orin, urging him to turn around and look at the distance. Each member of the group noticed smoke rising from afar and wondered if they were truly seeing a restaurant amidst the desert. The aroma was indeed enticing and the entire group began to glisten, their mouths watering as they sprinted towards the establishment. Upon reaching the site, they observed wooden structures and some rabbits, discovering that this place was called the Rabbit House, the only restaurant on the 99th floor, renowned for serving grilled fish, which was a favorite of both Orin and the two cats. The female rabbits promptly welcomed their new clients and requested that Orin provide some grilled fish in a commanding tone. However, this time it was the scythe rabbit who informed Orin that each fish would cost him one tower coin. Before Orin could respond, the expensive rabbit began to speak, explaining that there were no lakes or seas surrounding the desert, making it quite challenging for them to find any fish. The rabbit then instructed them to draft a credit agreement, with the terms and conditions remaining unchanged. Although the body was still available for use, Orin signed the contract immediately ordering 10 grilled fish for himself and his family. The scythe rabbit promptly began preparing several fish, which soon appeared delicious as they were grilled, causing the cat's mouths to water. The group immediately started devouring the food and requested more from the rabbits, who then began cooking pieces of meat and seafood that looked incredibly appetizing. I'd, too, am feeling hungry and will go eat something after completing this segment. The meal has finally concluded. The three cats have now been placed on the ground.
The group consumed so much that they now feel as though they might vomit. When Oren realized he needed to go sell something to the Bull King, he found himself unable to rise, prompting his followers to request a brief respite. As they were exceedingly tired, Oren decided that allowing them to rest for just one hour would not be detrimental. However, as soon as they closed their eyes, the side rabbit began to snore as well. He wore a mischievous yet endearing smile. The scene shifts to the following day, when bright light began to penetrate the closed eyes of the black cat, Oren. He yawned and opened his eyes, listening to the minion who was chattering away. Oren was informed that they were now in a significant predicament. Upon opening his eyes, he beheld the Minotaur warriors, feeling as if his spirit had left his body. The warrior merely inquired, if they were the ones who had come to visit the Bull King. Amidst the presence of many formidable adults, the monsters were exceedingly terrifying to the black cat, who began to weep as he spoke. He informed them that he was a traveling merchant, displaying his badge along with his group, and pleaded with them not to harm anyone. Suddenly, a warrior appeared and requested the group to follow him to the location of the king. Initially, they were taken aback upon realizing that the warriors were there to guide them. As they arrived at the site, Oren and his group were astonished by the true nature of the place. The king, a formidable bull, sat upon his throne near a crossroads, inquiring whether the cats were the ones who had come seeking him. His aura was so intimidating that the ignorant black cat was rendered speechless. However, he managed to inform the bull king that he had traveled from a distant land to offer a truly rare commodity. Oren attempted to pique the king's interest by mentioning that these items were from beyond the tower. Suddenly, the king informed them cats that he needed to consult an expert from the outside world to ascertain whether the item they were selling was indeed rare. The king then turned, and they noticed familiar footsteps approaching the cats. The bull king addressed the black dragon, revealing that before the cats stood none other than their son, Jun. Thus, my friend, this concludes today's chapter. Stay tuned for the next chapter next week. Best wishes to you all.